What's up everybody, Aaron here from Firefly Studios bringing you an exciting new batch of Raw Stronghold Warlords gameplay. I'm just going to caffeinate up real quick. Because this demo is pretty insane. It's fast paced, it's 20 minutes long, it requires a lot of daring tactical gameplay which of course I can provide. Now a couple of pointers before we get into it. This is an early version of the game, there are still some, a few kinks to work out. The UI especially is not finalized, there's quite a bit of dead space in there, so take everything with a grain of salt. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a bunch of, there's a bunch of new units in there, there's a couple new warlords which we can show. Um, so I thought it would be a damn shame if, uh, if people on the internet could not see it. So here we've got some mission, a mission objective and optional objectives. So defeat the enemy lord, breach the enemy stronghold and kill the enemy warlord, so easy enough. Uh, and then we have some optional objectives, uh, which of course will make sure that we hit on all the spicy notes of this demo. Okay, so let's jump in. Over here we have Lao Ai. He is the man we are tasked with killing his fortifications here. Um, taking down these fortifications will grant us a time bonus. Over here we have our castle economy. We're going to get a little uh, instant message from Qin Shi Huang in a moment. Um, so we'll wait for that to play out and then we will jump into the demo. No amount of walls will protect you from my wrath, Lao Ai. You will rule the day you defy me. So, now that Qin Shi Huang has said his piece, uh, we're going to do a fast and furious playthrough of this demo uh, and we're going to focus on the Warlord system. Um, as you know, it's in the title. Um, so pressing spacebar brings up the Warlord system. Over here, lands in red are our lands. These are ones we currently control. Lands in beige are neutral lands and lands in blue are the enemy lands which we can, can take over. Um, so up here we have the Ox Warlord who will send us resources, down here we have the Dragon Warlord who will send us siege forces, over here Horse Warlord who will use horse archers and increase our diplomacy point outage, and then Lao Ai over here who we have to uh, conquer. So first of all I'm going to show you how to take a Warlord by force. So moving over my Imperial troops which are the highest cost troops which are going to have the most attack damage, also the most armor. Also, unfortunately, the slowest. So as you can see, totally annihilating these tribesmen who are the lowest uh, cost troop you can get. You can get tribesmen uh, blowpipers um, and then you can also get spearmen. They're very fast, but very low armor and very low attack. So Ox Warlord here, gonna get Attacked by my Imperial troops. Yeah, he could do a little bit of damage, but he's a he's a weak He's got some weak source about him here. So he was easy enough to take down with these high cost Imperial troops open up the space bar open up the Warlords map. Sorry, and now the uh, Ox Warlords lands are now red therefore indicating they are ours opens up these uh, options here and He's a resource Warlord so he can send you stone wood and at higher levels, uh, fire oxen and iron. So we're gonna start asking him for wood because we need to start building up our economy. And then down here we have the uh, dragon warlord who is by far the most more exciting to be honest. Um, we're gonna open up the warlords panel and up in the top right here, you can see diplomacy, put your diplomacy points. We're at currently 62 to take him peacefully via diplomacy, we need 80. Um, you get a certain amount of diplomacy points uh, per minute as a baseline, but to increase that we're going to go into the town buildings panel here and create an embassy. This will increase the amount of diplomacy points we get per minute um, and sort of uh, increase this so that we can start demanding obedience, start getting attacks from him to soften up the enemy. Um, we're actually going to double dip here. We're going to also build a consulate which will give you more diplomacy points, less than an embassy, but a little more. Um, but first we have to concentrate on getting some defenses up. So this is just an outpost for our siege force that we're going to use to conquer Lao Ai over here, but we still need some defense. So we're going to start building up a little wall here, 
back to the grid based system as we said in previous videos just much easier much user friendly uh, get a tower up there get a staircase so our archers can go up and get our archers up this tower here so they can start firing upon any incoming forces from Lao Ai or his subjugated horse warlord so they're going to climb the tower here and space out and start firing send our axemen so that they can't get up this uh get up this tower here use them to buffer and there we go easy enough and now we have enough points or diplomacy points to demand obedience from the dragon so we're going to click this and then it opens up his options for us so he's a much more aggressive warlord he also has a, a passive which will be sending rocket launches to us periodically, which I will show you in a moment. But first, we are going to recruit a basic siege force from him. It's going to open up this little icon here. Um, little, basically loading up his siege force for you. Once that's complete, the attack icon, click attack enemy and click which estate you want the dragon to attack with his basic siege force. We are going to choose the Horse Warlord to soften him up before we go and take him out ourselves. Uh, now, here we are, the Rocket Launcher. So, as I said, rocket the Dragon Warlord is going, to start send is going to send us rocket launches periodically. This is the first of many he will send us. Beautiful little thing. Um, and I will, instead of telling you in theory what they will do, I will show you in action how they will operate. So, we're going to send... Let's send him also over here to start softening up the horse. So a couple of archers up here shooting at our Dragon Warlord's force. Hopefully these archers can take those guys out so we don't have to worry about them. Or at least our rocket launchers doesn't have to worry about them. Um, this archer is going to get a little bit of cover, but we vastly outnumber him, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, right. So as you can see, Dragon Forces, Dragon Warlord's forces easily wiped out, but you know they're only basic. So, but what we're going to do is uh, we're going to fire at these guys. But I think it might be a bit too far. Yeah, it takes a bit too long. That was the, that was the rocket launcher, but unfortunately, it has a little bit of a, a time to attack or time to launch. So you have to time it correctly to uh, actually get the effect you're looking for, which unfortunately I did not. But, you know, we showed it off and there'll be plenty more to come, so no worries on that end. Uh, so, we are going to further increase our diplomacy point output by placing down another embassy and another conch of it. Doesn't matter where you put these um, in regards to your economy. Uh, I'm just spacing them out so that if the enemy does get into our base, they can't take out our diplomacy output all in one go. Uh, now the ox has sent us a bunch of wood, so we are going to build out our economy. So we've got rice fields here, your main resource in Stronghold Warlord. You run out of rice, everything can go a bit uh, topsy-turvy, so you want to make sure your rice uh, economy is always um, going strong. Then we've got some pigs, and then some vegetables over here. We're also going to get a couple of tea plantations going and a tea house for those of you who played previous stronghold games tea basically replaces ale you give your uh, citizens some tea they're gonna love you a lot better so you can do this increase the tax rate uh, popularity panel down in the bottom right here again UI isn't final lots of dead space so again take this UI with a pinch of salt now what can we move on to let's get a market going Markets will allow you to buy and trade resources, weapons, etc, etc. So the fact that we have got um, the ox sending us wood, I can basically not worry about my own wood output. Uh, already got free wood camps here, but could be stronger, but doesn't have to be because we've got the ox wall uh, helping us out. But we are going to actually sell most of this now that we are focusing on military. So another rocket launcher over here. We've got a rocket uh, siege force now ready to go. Going to send them over to the horse warlord. And as you can see, little little bit bigger and equipped with the dragon warlord's own rocket launchers. So he's going to send over a couple. You won't be able to control where they shoot or 
how they deploy, but you know, they should still do us a little bit of damage. Now, as you can see, we are running out of time, so we really need to we need to hurry this up. So we're gonna get a siege camp and a barracks going. Build a bunch of crossbowmen to open up uh, the way to this uh, wall over here, so we can begin getting more time added onto this mission. Oh dear, four rice farms. Ah, that that should. We only built them a couple of minutes ago, so they should start seeing the effect of those soon. Uh, so Dragon sending his increased force over here. Hopefully, should be able to handle themselves a little bit better. Um, he's also got a couple of rocket launchers, uh, but us, we're going to focus on Lao Ai over here. So I'm going to send my crossbowmen up front because they should be able to deal with most of uh, most of the troops out here. Just a few auxiliaries, so nothing much to worry about. Um, so yeah, let's position them up here. Looks like we've already got a fair few troops heading our way, so we're going to put these on attack. And they're going to start just mowing down these guys over here. Take out these guys so they can't get close. Archers. Yep, see, the armor on these guys is just completely outdoing these lowly auxiliary troops. Going to move these guys up. Let's start taking out these archers on the walls so that our rocket launchers can get in there. Okay. Easy enough. Lao Ai really hasn't planned ahead with his Miga. Oh dear. That's an issue. <sighs> Shit. He's sending the uh, horse warlord after my rocket launcher here. Oh, seems to be alright. Move these guys back. Okay, let's fire this bad boy at the gatehouse. And you'll be able to see a bunch of damage there. So, single use, but very, very high damage, especially against enemy battlements. So, we'll get another one going. Oh, we've got one archer over here that we need to take care of. Okay, move them over so they can get line of sight. And there we go. Then move them back so they don't get fired upon by the enemy archers in these further towers. And let's get a few more rocket launchers over here. We can get upgrade the warlord here. Do it a couple of times for good measure. Recruit another siege force. Move you guys back. Get back, guys. Get back. I'm going to form up and move on back. And this rocket launcher should be able to take out the first gatehouse here. Giving us a bit more time, but we do need to hurry up here. Otherwise, we're going to lose. Okay. Luckily, we've really got a... Um, We've got a good concentration of rocket launchers heading out there, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. We're also going to use the siege force here. We're going to concentrate on the Lao Ai here since we're running out of time. Um, all right, this should be the first wall down, giving us a bit more bonus time. Here we go, and there we are. And increased time limit. Gatehouse has been crushed. And we're going to send, due to the rocket launchers, amazing range we should be able to just get these in here without too much issue from these archers so we're going to send the rocket launchers at the foot of the hill now the further away you fire the rocket the more likely they will miss so we have to be a bit careful uh, we do also have the dragon warlords basic siege force heading in um we should be able to take out some of these troops here all right let's fire one see how that goes Ah, pretty good. Fire another. Beautiful. And let's try get another in. Let's see if this one happens. This is gonna be. This could be pretty far out. So. Let's 
fire at this little wall here. Let's see how this does. Is it going to do anything? Beautiful. Lovely stuff. Took out a couple of the uh, crossbowmen on the on the weaker towers here, as you can see. Right, let's move in. Let's get our men in there. Take out these Imperial guys. There we go, one down. Oh, they go straight for the archers. They know what they're doing. Uh, they're taken out. Let's move these in. We have to act quickly. And then after we've taken these guys out, we can begin. Okay, move them in. All right, focus on Imperial, because we're going to need Imperial Swordsmen to take out Lao Ai. Okay. Okay, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. We've taken out all their Imperial troops now, so uh, should be easy pickings here. Take out these. Ah, see, and crossbowmen. Just too good. Move out. Ah, kill squad. This is the Thou Eye kill squad right here. Um, okay. Got a few more rocket launches. I'm not sure what we're going to use these for, seeing as all the walls have now been destroyed. Okay, move these guys in. Oh, protect the Dragon Warlord's force here. Um, you will not, you're not able to stack. Uh, attack forces at the moment so we do you do have to wait until the dragon for warlords forces are all completely eradicated before you send in another because otherwise it would just get a bit ridiculous and you could just, just start sending wave upon wave um so because the dragon warlord has done pretty well there and kept most, most of his troops alive we can't send another in which is a bit of a shame but oh well um crossbowmen take out this imperial guard here these guys in. We've got another batch of reinforcements, auxiliary axemen. Uh, let's build a couple more of those guys just to be sure. Move them over. And let's recruit another siege force just to put the final nail in the coffin. You guys move in. Wait for this to be done. Oh. That was the wrong estate there. You have to be a bit careful. They're heading to... That's all right. They're heading to the wars. That's fine. Right. Kill squad. In operation. Move them all up. And let's start taking this guy down. Oh, he's, he's, he's moving left to right. Trying to dodge. Trying to parry. Uh, new troop displacement at work here. So you can't just stack all your units upon one another you'll have to wait until the unit directly in front of the enemy is dead before another one can move in to make it a little more fair but yeah these guys looks look to have Lao Ai on the ropes he's about to get the KO'd or oh, he's about to get KO'd sorry messed up my final line fuck <laughs> um and yeah that was the fast and most efficient play for you can probably do of this demo Focusing on the Dragon Warlord because he's definitely the uh, the uh, the best one to focus on in this demo in particular. For this playthrough, not going to be focused on actually completing the objective. I'm just going to be showing you guys uh, all the different. Oh, one second. Okay, now Chin's done his yapperin. Um Yeah, I'm gonna in this playthrough I'm just gonna show you each individual panel, all the different buildings that I may haven't maybe haven't covered yet in my previous two playthroughs. Um, and yeah, really go into the deep, into the weeds in depth into what each individual thing will do. Obviously, at this time there's lots of balancing and revision to be done, so you know things may end up changed in the final game but yes just to give you a, a quick idea in theory of what 
most of these things, how most of these things will operate, how most of them will affect your playthroughs uh, in the final game. Um, so real quick, I'm just going to take out these warlords over here just so they don't get a bit annoying later for us. Build a tiny little defense here with a large tower. Um, send these guys just to make sure we don't get attacked while I'm showing off uh, each individual thing. Um, okay, this guy's going down. Um, cool, so while those guys sort that out, we will crack on. So first of all, industry panel here, classic stronghold panel. You guys will know most of the buildings uh, in this panel already, uh, but we do have a new production chain um, ready to show you. So wood camps now replaced by sort of bamboo farms, We've kept them named as wood camps for clarity's sake for you classic stronghold fans. Uh, but yeah, classic stronghold resource. You guys already know mostly about those. Those they'll chop down wood from nearby trees, deliver it to your stockpile, um, and yeah, allow you to build the majority of your buildings. Um, next up, we have the clothing production line. Um, so first of all, silk work farmer will begin farming the silk and um, doing his little uh, production on all that sort of stuff i'm sure for those of you who know how to farm silk uh you'll be able to give that a better explanation than me but i am not adept in the arts of silk farming so right now it looks like he's putting it kind of looks like he's making a rosemary based pizza that's my hot take um I'm sure it's more complicated. I'm sure it's very, uh, very detailed and ingenious the, what he's doing right now. But yes, research that on your own time if you want to know about that. That will then send, he will then uh, deliver that silk to the stockpile over here. Then the silk workshop will take it, make it into um, fine silks to be then used into in the clothes workshop. And as you can see, all these buildings um, will have have a status and a worker sort of status as well so obviously these two are currently halted they are functioning but they are halted uh due to the fact that there is no silk in the stockpile for them to use in their production um so yes that is clothes and clothes will increase your popularity they will allow your citizens to don lovely garments and the such so now moving on to uh, farming and housing. As you can see here, I've built up a few already. So we've got vegetable fields, rice fields, tea, uh, a tea plantation, a tea house, uh, pig farm, and a couple of houses over here. So a superior house, which will uh, provide you with better housing quality and more peasants compared to a hut will not so much give you quality of housing and less peasants. Um, and then, yeah, your economy buildings over here. Got some rice going, tea, pigs, you know, as with previous strongholds, more variety in your production of economy, in your uh, economy building, sorry, uh, will grant you more happiness so you can increase your taxes as I've done down here. Okay, and moving on, it'll be town buildings, market, classic, buy and sell resources, easy enough to get. And you saw me use it a bunch in the, in the previous uh, playthroughs and then your diplomacy buildings here already showing them off um, and then we've got some workshops just like in previous strongholds they've already been built for us here fletchers making bows axe making axes obviously um, swordsmiths an armory here and an artillator artillate yes artillator i always think i'm saying that wrong um, so they're making our weapons to be taken to the armory to be used in recruiting our um, military from the barracks, which is here. Um, again, saw this in previous playthroughs. Spear tribesmen, blowpipe tribesmen, auxiliary axemen, auxiliary archers, imperial warriors, and imperial crossbowmen. So three bands of units from... Oh, almost out of rice. No worries. We don't really need to worry about that. Um, from our lowest here, but cheap as chips. 
um, and just about as useful, um, but will get you out of a bind if you need to really quickly get some troops out there. Also, they're very fast, which is nice. Um, auxiliaries, which are your mid-range units, and then Imperial Warriors, which are your heavily armored but very slow units. But those are your guys if you need to like sort of storm a keep, um, take out an enemy general, something a bit more heavy duty than battles or skirmishes out in the field. And then siege camp over here. Oh, where are we? Annoying horse warlord again. Okay, we'll be able to siege camp here. Again, I think I showed most of these units, but we got a Mamphit, a Fire Arrow Cut, a Fire Ox, and a Catapult, and a Rocket Launcher. Let's, let's line these guys up like the usual suspects. Which one of you is Benicio? My favorite. Um, okay, where's the... Uh, there we go. Oh, they were hiding. So yeah, here we are. Beautiful little siege engines. Uh, fire Arrow Carts, Anti-Infantry. Oh, they're being fired at. From over the river. Rocket launchers, basically anti wall, using against walls, they're super good. And then your catapults, which are sort of a little bit good at everything, can go anti infantry, knock back a bunch of troops, more sturdy, a little bit faster. Mantlets uh, will protect your archers, protect your siege equipment, and fire oxen. You've seen those in previous videos. Um, kamikaze cows. And I think that's mostly everything. We've got some, we've got a bastion here, which is a, I believe, from my memory, it's a brand new uh, piece of uh, tower wall we've got. Um, it's a lot lower, but will allow a lot more troops due to our new troop displacement system we've got. Uh, and then we've got a small tower here, very tall, but only allows like four archers and or crossbowmen. Medium tower, a bit smaller, more sturdy, allows a few more uh, troops. And then a large tower, we'll quickly buy some stone to show you that. Large tower here, boom, look at that. Like a, like a, like a beautiful family portrait right there, lovely. This is the little fat baby. And these are the three handsome siblings. That was weird. Um, okay, well, popularity is in a bit of a nightmare at the moment, but that's all right because we're only we're only doing an exhibition match anyway. Water pots, kind of like in previous strongholds, will have a couple of workers there to put out fires in your castle. Here they are. Here are the boys. Um, and yeah, now that this oh he's he's taking a little duck. There he is, ready to go. He's going to have massive forearms. Actually, he looks like he's already got massive forearms. Massive forearms carrying that big pot of water around. Uh, but yeah, they're, re they're ready to go. Again, lot, a lot of gunpowder in this particular stronghold. So they probably will come in useful quite a lot. So always a good idea to have some of those. And then over here is the Fear Factor uh, panel, which we unfortunately haven't got kitted out at the moment. Mainly because Fear Factor, while the art has been done and while most of the design has been done, we're still working a little bit on the animations. We'll show, we'll show the Fear Factor buildings in later gameplay videos. So make sure, as always, you are subscribed to Firefly Worlds on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I think that was pretty much everything. Um, so to finish, we will minimize the UI plus the, uh, the uh, game speed to show you the bustling economy in action. This is a very small economy, so... Uh, yeah, there we go. But yes, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, as always, we will have much more Warlords content coming down the line, more dev diaries, more Q&As, more gameplay videos, as I'm sure you're mostly interested in. We will be streaming this demo a little more for future shows. Um, so I implore you, if you do have something you want to see investigated a little further, a little bit deeper, then either stick around on our social media and wait for the shout out for those streams uh, going live or alternatively you can join our discord uh, where you can post questions which may be answered in future q a videos but yes that is pretty much everything i feel um as always if you did like the video and you want to see more stronghold wallows content make sure you hit that like button make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button helps us out a bunch and as always, we will see you next time for another Firefly Studios video. See you later.